You asked for it. You demanded it. You have waited. And I have played this thing at an absurd amount of time. For an absurd amount of time in order to bring you my proper impressions. Because needless to say... My first review, or preview, I should say, of the Demon Hunter was scathing. Absolutely scathing. And they have done significant amount of work to try and appease people who are like, I like the look of this thing, but it plays like ass. Can you do something about it? And Blizzard has answered, for the most part. They have done a good job. There is a fucking lot to like here. There is so much to like, guys, that it's... It's one of those specs that is definitely bringing us into the future of what WoW is supposed to be. It is a spec that is hugely aware of what it is supposed to be. And it is absolutely aware of its target audience, which is a huge, huge population of World of Warcraft. So I would expect very few people not to have a Demon Hunter, even as like a capped alt at some point, and enjoying the shit out of this backflipping, gliding beast of a spec. Let's get into it. We are, of course, looking at the deeps. The Havoc spec. Only two specs available. I am on the 110 version here, despite the fact that I put ludicrous amounts of hours into this. I mean, we're talking 30 plus. I don't actually have a personally capped one. Uh, and the problem with the Demon Hunter is you don't actually get all your talents until you're level 110, which is something you very much need to be aware of. The rest of the specs in the game do get all their talents unlocked as soon as you start Legion, as long as you have a capped character now in Walls of Draenor. But the Demon Hunter does not... <laughs> You will only get your last talent point at level 110, but that's absolutely fine. That's not going to cause you any issues whatsoever. How does it play? Well, it's very much a builder, spender, spec, as are most things. You build up your fury! Wah! You build up your fury bar here, and then you spend it on a huge amount of abilities. They could be super cool abilities, like the fucking eye beam that turns you into a giant fucking demon and then sprays the target with Bukaki endlessly. You can also do things like a Chaos Strike. Critical Strikes will refund 20 Fury. They've altered that since we first looked at this where it was an entire buggy mess. Yeah, you might remember that. We could do huge CC with Chaos Nova, which also turns you into a badass demon and AoEs everything and actually does really nice damage as well. We have our Fell Rush for moving around. We have spectral sights, so we can start looking into the distance to spot enemies and treasures and such things like that. We can backflip with our vengeful retreat. And of course, let us not forget that if you just want to go hamburgers, you could turn into a big fuck-off demon for a really, really long time. Yeah, a <laughs> really, really long time where your spells will alter and turn into something far more devastating. My good, my good is there a lot to like here. And of course, if you want to just look really flashy, we can of course throw in the blade dance. Wee 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 wee. This is a absolute work of art in terms of animations. Absolute work of art in terms of animations. It has been since the beginning. This is very much specifically targeted at guys who love fucking transmog because you can make demon hunters look super cool with all the varieties of glaives. And the play style is second. It takes a back seat to the fact that everything you do looks amazing. Right? Everything you do just looks amazing. There's no spells that you cast here that are like, well, this is pretty shit. Even the basic stuff. Looks cool. You're going to be spinning your animations. They have multiple animations for just your builder and your demon's bite. Yeah? Your Chaos Fury has leaps into the air and spinning attacks. And all the extra talents you add in. Look at this. He's fucking doing front flips and shit. Right? <laughs> it's just... Look at this shit. Yeah? Absolutely insanity. Our artifact ability is the Fury of the Eldari. Which is basically Ravager if you've ever played a warrior. Yeah, you can see your glaives go flying around, spinning around, chopping everything to fucking bits. Also looks cool. A heroic throw looks cool because you throw a glaive. Fucking looks awesome. What more can I say? Even our cloak ability it looks fucking awesome. Yeah, our little uh, raid cooldown looks fucking awesome. It's so hard to dislike this. Would I play one? No, no, I wouldn't. So let's get into the actual gameplay then and see what's going on. So it's very base level. You have very hard hitting abilities like I-Beam and stuff. Yeah, you'll want to keep those on cooldown. In between there, you'll be doing Builder and Spenders. Now, I have various talents here, which I'm going to go and swap out of. I don't believe I have on this shitty fucking PvP one. Uh, what are these hands? Silkweak Splint? I haven't even seen that they're a little hand. Uh, let me get rid of all the extra spells and stuff that I actually... Fuck, let's get rid of this. Prestige, go away. Whatever, I don't care. 
Stop forcing the shit on me. I'm happy that you've got it. Uh, let me get rid of the extra spells that I have picked up here. Uh, momentum and fell barrage. If I get rid of these abilities, what you actually have, if I drag these off the bar, is very few. Yeah, you actually have very, very, very few spells, if you can see here. Uh, defensive cooldown blur, I didn't mention earlier, is one of the worst in the game. It increases your chance to dodge by 50%. Ugh, it reduces all damage taken by 35%. It is on a one minute cooldown, though. 35% isn't the worst thing. It's just the dodge aspect of it is very, very fucking random, and I really hate that. So you can actually see, in terms of DPS, you have very, very few abilities. And the idea is that you augment that with the talents, and this is more represent representative of that idea, that baseline design philosophy that Blizzard came into Legion with than any other spec, which is to be expected, given this is a brand new spec entirely and a brand new class. They have, very much like the Pandas, when they joined the game, and the Death Knights, when they joined the game, they are the epitome of what the design philosophy is. And it's very, very base level. I mean, I can get rid of my racial here. You have very, very few spells. Very few at all. And each of them have a function that's actually a duplicate. I can keep dragging away here. We do have a CC here, which is in prison, which is in prisons. A demon damage will cancel that effect. Obviously fine in Legion, as it imprisons demons. And that interrupt consume magic. Note that that generates 50 fury on a successful interrupt. I want you to note how clever this is. This is actively making people who are new to the game yeah most old school guys will already do this but new to the game are guys who just kind of derp around and do damage and go out of there really try to encourage them at a base level to get involved with things like interrupts because they're going to get big dps gains from that they're trying to promote that in a very obvious manner love this love this we've obviously seen damage bonuses from interrupts for a while now but they've been glyphs and all that kind of stuff now they're just putting it in baseline and saying look interrupting is a good thing please try and do it you'll get more damage which is what encourages most uh, of the newer players to actually get involved with those kinds of things so at your very base level if you wanted to play at a really super base level you would simply be generating fury dumping it on priority spells like i-beam yeah, which has a huge range, by the way. I uh, was surprised. And if you're single targeting, you'll just be dumping it. Yeah, you'll just be dumping it with your Chaos Strike. You'll be building it up to max and then spamming your Chaos Strike away because obviously if it crits, it'll refund abilities like there, which means you get the most out of it. Then rebuilding it back up and then getting rid of it again. Once you start AoEing, you'll add in things like Blade Dance. Or if you talent it, you can use Blade Dance single target as well. And throwing down abilities like Fury of the Illidari just to go and do things. Just look as well. I want to know again how clever this is in the appeal factor. Nearly everything the Demon Hunter does isn't big bursty damage. It's all tick damage. What this means is combining abilities floods your screen with damage numbers. People don't care what the damage numbers actually are. What they like to see is huge amounts of them. That means I'm doing a lot of damage. This is so specifically targeted at that audience. It's unbelievable. It's really so good. That's your basics. Let's get into the talents. I want to... Oh, before we get into the talents, let me talk about Metamorphosis. So it's a four-minute cooldown, okay? It's a big deal. Uh, you leap into the air, land with explosive force, dealing 40,000 chaos damage to enemies within eight yards, stunning them for three seconds. Upon landing, you are transformed into a hellish demon. Just listen to what I'm saying to you here, guys. And greatly empowering your chaos strike and blade dance abilities. Do note that since the first inception of the Demon Hunter, my biggest complaint about Metamorphosis is that mechanically, it's fucking boring. It's really boring. But it's not targeted at me, right? Who sees that this is boring. It's targeted at guys who go, I'm a big fucking demon, dude. And it is way cool, right? All that actually changes is nothing. When you turn into a demon, you're still going to do the same shit you were doing when you weren't a demon. It just hits way, way harder. You still got to build up your fury and then you're going to dump it with annihilation. It's now not called uh, chaos bite or whatever. It's called fucking annihilation instead, yeah? But it's the same stuff. You don't do anything different. <laughs> you don't do it. You can't do anything different. You can't. And the very worst, if you fuck this up, is that your I-beam will be on cooldown, which isn't augmented by being a demon. So you want this on cooldown when you enter metamorphosis, yeah? It's designed so that if you're wary of performing badly because some specs are too complicated, or it's a little, you're not great at World of Warcraft, you'll be fine with a Demon Hunter. You'll be absolutely fine. It's so hard to fuck this up. 
you literally have a few spells and most of them are just easy to get back even if you miss it up if you miss like miss blade dance by like one global cooldown it comes back almost instantly the only thing you have to track is eye beam for god's sake that's it eye beam and fury of the yellow daria it's very base level are the only things you really need to be aware of meta is four minutes and even then when you're in meta you still do the same shit it's very, very difficult to fuck this up. Which should mean you see a lot of guys, you know those wonderful, wonderful guys. They're super funny. They're great to hang around with, but there's no fucking place for them in a, in a decent raid because they suck. Their DPS is always bad. They can't handle it. Demon Hunters are the answer to that. And at the same time, they look super cool doing it. Right then, let's look at the talent center and see how we can turn this for those guys who look at this spec and go, oh, it's super easy. How can we add more complexity to it? And this will be the maker or breaker as to whether a demon hunter is for you. I don't want you to be listening to this as a huge majority of our audience are, which is raiders and say, well, this spec is for the noobs. You can augment this properly. So we get Fell Master, which increases Fell Rush damage by 50% and grants 25 Fury where Fell Rush damages at least one target. Now, ideally, you want this to be hitting multiple targets, and this means that Fell Rush then becomes a part of your rotation instead of standing still. Do note, though, these are the kind of things that turn me away from the Demon Hunter, although I'll give my full conclusion at the end. All these extra things which involve moving through targets and all this kind of stuff, I don't like personally, which is the kind of thing that turns me off. Chaos Cleave, then Chaos Strike hits one additional target. A full-on passive, nothing you can do about that, right? And Blind Fury, increase the duration of I-Beam by 50%. Nothing else to be said about that. Nice, easy stuff, but if you want to add more to your rotation, pad out this bar and get some extra use, you can add in Fell Mastery. That's your choice. It's still a passive, but... I've tried to explain this a number of times. People think complexity or depth comes from just slapping more spells on your bars. That is absolutely not true. What Fell Mastery does is turn a spell you already have into something that you can actually make use of and add into your playstyle, right? That's a good talent. That is a good idea. Oh, 100 get prepared. Increase, uh, reduce the cooldown of Vengeful Retreat by 10 seconds. That is your backflip. And generates 40 fury over 5 seconds if you damage at least one enemy with Vengeful Retreat. Similar to Fell Mastery, this is not adding more spells to the bars, but it is adding in the usage of a spell that ordinarily would go completely unused and turning it into something you can manage for extra DPS. If you want to add in significant amounts of fury management, as you can see with the basics, there's basically no fury management. Just make sure you have enough 50 fury for I-Beam once you get there, right? Have some fury to go into meta with so you can start spamming Annihilation straight away. Not hard stuff for even the most basic of basic players. If you want to start adding things in, though, here's your options. You can absolutely do that. Again, this idea of flipping away from the tags, although you can do some animation manipulation if you want to go down that road, there is adding more stuff in so you can work this in. So you can do things like Vengeful Retreat and Fell Rush through targets and do all these very cool things without slapping more shit on your bar. Demonic Demon Blades survives. God knows how this thing fucking survived. It replaces Demon's Bite. Demon's Bite, if you're not sure, again, is your generator. This is your base ability with no cooldown. You can spam it all day that generates fury. Gets rid of that, and now your auto attacks just do it. It's the worst talent I've ever seen in the history of World of Warcraft. It's so bad. Oh, Demonic Appetite. A Chaos Strike is a chance to spawn a lesser Soul Fragment, and consuming any Soul Fragment grants you 30 Fury. So, Soul Fragments are something you'll notice as soon as you get your Demon Hunter. Uh, they start at level 98. I'm not being a noob there. Yeah, 98. Once you start doing that prequest, you'll notice that these purple orbs start appearing. Uh, do I have Soul Rend... Uh, where is it? Excuse me for one second. In fact, I think I, it's uh, an Artifact ability. Uh, no, it's one of these somewhere uh, where you can actually get these purple orbs lying on the floor You'll notice them as soon as you start your demon hunter campaign these soul fragments early days They're going to give you a damage buff later in the game. They're going to give you healing. I want to point something out here F leveling and farming as a demon hunter is one of the most ridiculous things I've ever done in this game because you just could stay at 100% health while putting out consistent cleave and huge damage all the time it is really crazy which again appeals to those guys who are going back and doing old dungeons or want to do gold farming or want to do anything like that the demon hunter is the farming class uh because you'll do huge amounts of damage and as long as you can kill at least one target your soul fragments will appear heal you for huge amounts and keep your game going and you can just keep going and going and going and going and going indefinitely very cool you never have to stop with the demon hunter i've never i have not pulled enough yet where i've had to like stop <laughs> not yet even while leveling with huge amounts of packs okay 
So automatic appetite will then give you more fury, uh, like in bursts of fury. So you can say, do I want fury over time? Do I want burst fury? Am I going to be uh, using different abilities? Am I going to be using this more often? Am I going to be using chaos strike a lot? Am I not going to be using chaos strike a lot? Lots of different variations here. Level 102, this is where I started to get the my type of design that I would prefer. Adding in fell blade. Okay, so let me read the others. So first blood reduces the fury cost of blade dance by 20 and increases damage against the first target attacks. Blade dance, of course, being that cleave spell. Wonderful if you're doing that passive cleave on other targets. And Bloodlet, Throw Glaive causes your da targets to bleed for 200% of the damage inflicted over 10 seconds. If this effect is reapplied, any remaining damage will be added to the new Bloodlet. It's basically Rend, but once again, they're not adding more spells to your bars. They're just augmenting ability that you already have that you might not be using ordinarily or might not be using anywhere near as much or not prioritizing enough. They're throwing it in there and saying, now you have a bleed to manage as well. We don't need to stick rend on your bars, right? Like they do the survival hunter. We don't need to stick a bleed on your bars. You already have a spell. We'll just make sure that that does the bleed. So, Fellblade, you charge to your target, deal uh, fire damage. Demon's Bite has a chance to reset the cooldown of Fellblade and generates 30 Fury. This is a much more traditional ability, and it's certainly a, the kind of ability that I enjoy to use in World of Warcraft. Let me stick it on the actual bars. Uh, I just removed them to obviously show you the base abilities. So, you can see there it lights up, gives you a nice big chunk of Fury, and also adds some nice, decent gameplay elements to it, because it gives you such a large chunk of Fury... That you want to be aware if you're doing a big builder so you can do some demon spite spam. Or annihilation because of my uh, artifact ability. Then you need to be aware that, oh shit, this is my over cap me. So I need to be aware of that, yeah? If I could get it to actually happen, will you happen there? No. But you'll get the idea. If you're near the top and you're going to slap on an extra 30 Fury, you obviously don't want to waste that Fury. Resource management is a big deal. And the fact that it resets and stuff, similar to how a lot of classes play in WoW, is something I felt very comfortable with and really started to flesh out the Demon Hunter for me and make me enjoy it a little bit more. Level 4, we get some de uh, defensive abilities. You slip into the nether, increasing the movement speed by 100%, becoming immune to all damage, but unable to attack. Okay, so some interesting abilities there with netherwalk. Desperate instincts, you automatically trigger blur when you fall below 35% health. This effect can occur every 30 seconds. Really dislike this. Mainly because of the dodge component. It's not bad if you're not ever going to have to dodge anything and you get this automatic damage reduction bonus and you get it twice as often as you would get if you used it manually, which is rare. It's rare, but that's when it's useful. If you're using it for solo work, not so good. Soul rending, though, gain 100% leech while meta if you're leveling and stuff, which obviously I've been doing. This makes meta and some also just a full-on fucking heal. So you could take on, as I just said then... What you'll find when leveling or doing solo content, even really difficult solo content with your Demon Hunter, is you will actively be pulling more adds into the fight. That sounds really backwards, I know. But bear in mind that killing adds gives you massive amounts of health and using Mata can heal you up. You can solo some ridiculous content with a Demon Hunter, which again appeals to that huge market of people who want a good solo game. The Demon Hunter is again ticking that box. Level 6, Momentum then. Fell Rush Eventual Retreat increases your damage done by 20% for 4 seconds. Ties really into Fell Mastery and Prepared, but also, also gives you some bursts. It's only a 4 second window, but you line that up with I-Beam and stuff, and now you start to see where they're fucking coming from. My choice out of here was Fell Eruption or Nemesis. Nemesis seemed very strange to me at first. It's a 2 minute cooldown. It increases the damage you inflict against the target by 15% for 1 minute. Not bad. What's all this though? When the target is slain, you will inflict 15% additional damage against all creature types matching the original target for the remaining duration. What? This is cool. In dungeons and stuff, you generally have a theme in that dungeon, which means the dungeon is heavily populated by a certain creature type, yeah? This means that you just have this passive extra damage bonus against most things throughout dungeons and stuff, which makes Nemesis a really tempting option in those areas. Or you can move over to what I preferred, which was Felt Eruption. Kind of Stormbolt. It pales the target for lol amounts of damage, 221,822 for 10 Fury, good god, 35 second cooldown, chaos damage, and stuns them for 2 seconds. It does 100% extra damage to any thick target, permanently immune to stun. Against bosses and stuff, big, bad, a boom. You can also see why, very clever talent design, it is not in the same tree as Momentum, so you can't stack on another 20% damage on top of that. Or Nemesis as well, these are just nice, big damage bonuses. I love Fell Eruption. 
Really enjoy it. Love having these extra one-off abilities that you slip in there, do big damage. You can manage that really nicely with trinket procs or whatever to get some good bonuses out of there. What my preferred one is. Let's move down even further then. Throw Glaive as two charges and snares all enemies' hits. Okay, that works kind of well with our bleed effects and stuff that we can mix into that. Like it. Unleash Fury. Removes the Fury cost of Chaos Nova and reduces its cooldown by 35, 33%. I like this for the dungeon spam and all that kind of stuff because Chaos Nova does really good damage. 30,000 damage for absolutely fuck all. And you can throw it against multiple targets. Nice big AoE. Demon Reborn, then. Uh, I really dislike this one. A lot of people keep telling me I should give it more of a chance, but I've got to be honest, I've played with this for about five hours. Still didn't like it. All your cooldowns are reset when you invoke Metamorphosis. There just ain't that much to get excited about with a Demon Hunter in terms of big cooldowns, if I'm being honest. Especially when I'm in Mater and Mater's benefiting from different things. Level 10 Chaos Blades, then. Instant 2-minute cooldown. Increase all damage done by 10% for 12 seconds while active your auto-attack deals 200% increased damage. Oh, Blizz. I was so sad to see such a flat-out dull talent at level 110. Pruh. Just adding a DPS cooldown to it. I would love this to do anything other than what it actually does, like augment Mater in some way, reduce the cooldown if I do certain things. Something along those lines would have been significantly more interesting than just more damage for 12 seconds. Hey. Although the chaos damage from auto attacks is nice. It's not exciting. This is really sad to see at 110. Really sad. Demonic, though, I beam causes you to enter demon form for five seconds after it finishes dealing damage. Yes. Means you can slip in some annihilations and stuff if you do, uh, if you time your fury right, which is what the spec's all about. Oh, this thing, which is fucking hilarious. Fell barrage. At your command, unleash fell. Inflict unleash the fell. Inflicting 80,000 chaos damage to your target and nearby enemies for each charge. A maximum of five charges. Your damaging attacks have a chance to regenerate a charge. This thing's fucking funny, man. I, like, can't even believe this because um, I played with it for a while. Just to give you a history lesson. I played with it for a little while, and then they removed it <laughs> for a little while. And I was like, no fucking shit you removed this thing. Because, frankly, <laughs> it was just so fucking hilarious. Uh, but they put it back in. So, sure. So, if you want your mad burst AoE and, cons and even consistently recharges... Boom, boom, boom. You can just spam this thing to high heaven. Mix it in with eye beams. Just look at the ridiculous, de like, fucking, look at my screen, man. It's, as I keep saying, it's so fucking hard. You can see I've already had another charge back. Throw them down. And again, it's all tick damage. They know what they're doing with this spec. Good God, they know what they're doing with this spec. So, yeah, you get this lovely Zerg ability. You can let it recharge. You're going to fuck off your other raiders with this because they're going to, you're going to build up your five charges and be like... Oh, all those ads are spawning now. You're going to throw down a Fury of the Ladara. You're going to spam five fucking Fell Barrage charges. You can Chaos Nova them and you can I beam them all. And they'll go, what the fuck just happened? And you'll be like, Demon Hunter, bro. Demon Hunter, get fucker doodled. Let's look at the artifact weapon. <sighs> Not the most exciting stuff, unfortunately. Sorry to say. <laughs> I know you're hoping some more. So Fury of the Ladara is your base pickup. Anguish of the Deceiver, then. Each time your IB deals damage to a target, it applies Anguish. When Anguish expires, it deals Chaos Damage to the victim per application, so you get this extra dot. Again, this dot damage, they're so fucking clever. Your screen is just a fucking rainbow bukkake fest of numbers. Rage of the Eldari. When Fury of the Eldari ends, 100% of the damage is dealt. Erupts into an explosion of fell energy, dividing that chaos damage among all nearby enemies. Okay, so it's a passive again. Fury of the Eldari. It's based on the damage of Fury of the Eldari. So it's nothing we can manipulate. It's something you should know there. And our inner demons. Chaos strikes a chance to unleash your inner demon, causing it to crash into your target and deal chaos damage to all nearby enemies. Okay? Again, passive. Nothing much you can do about that except favor Chaos Strike more and more. Okay, which is something you need to be aware of. The rest of the stuff is all like passive stuff. Nothing particularly exciting uh, that I, w I thought I should mention here, honestly. Uh, you can see with Soul Fragment, the remaining cooldown of I Beam and Chaos Nova is reduced, which is nice. Again, the Soul Fragments, which plays into the talent of generating Soul Fragments. All that kind of stuff pretty good. You might be wondering why this is blanked out. Uh, it's just, it needs 1.6 million artifact power. Lol. And there's, it's just a flat damage increase. It's what you get when you actually start, so... Nothing I can do about that. I hope I've give you a positive result of this because I just know that this appeals to so many fucking people. 
Would I play one, as I said earlier? No, it's not for me. For basically the reason is if I could choose this and probably like something very, very close to this as the only talent setup I would ever play for this spec as a raider, I would be fine with it. I honestly would probably enjoy myself for the entire expansion. The other choices, though, I really dislike. I really dislike the movement stuff and the eventual retreat stuff. All that, trying to mix them into my rotation doesn't feel comfortable for me in the least. Really actually get us on my fucking tits. Uh, playing with it felt like I was pulling teeth, like charging around and backflipping and making all this stuff work. Tried to fuck about with animations to try and be a tryhard. All this kind of stuff just was not into whatsoever. And it's basically there is a talent cell that really appeals to me. But as somebody you like... I'm a, a Mythic Raider, right? So I always go for top top level performance, which means if my talents do perform better, even slightly, I'm going to be picking that because that's what I like to do. That overrides any of my other choices here uh, in terms of my getting my best fun out of the game. But I am in the minority there. I am absolutely in minority there. I walk away from the Demon Hunter going, man, I know exactly what you're going for. Blizzard's vision for this is tremendous. And I'm more than happy to say, if you are not... Worried about any of the things that I just brought up. This spec is a shitload of fun. It looks fantastic. It's And you're going to have some good times with it, man. It's very hard not to. It's very, very hard not to have a lot of fun with this. And I hope you enjoy it. Isn't it just absurdly beautiful to look at? It's absurdly beautiful to look at. Ladies and gentlemen, the Havoc Demon Hunter. Have fun with it, please. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.